This video will explore the mechanisms behind alternating current generators. We will explore how these generators are used to produce energy, and we will examine their output using Faraday's law of induction. One important application of electromagnetic induction is the AC generator, which is used to convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. An AC generator consists of a coil of wire, usually with a large number of turns, that is made to rotate in a magnetic field. This coil is also connected to an external circuit, using slip rings and brushes. Now recall that Faraday's law of induction states that the induced EMF is equal to the negative rate of change of magnetic flux linkage with time, and that magnetic flux linkage can be determined from the following quantities. In AC generators, the magnetic field B and area of the coil A are both constant, but the flux linkage varies as the coil rotates, because the angle theta between the magnetic field and area changes with time so an EMF will be induced in the coil. This EMF is then transferred to the external circuit. We will now examine the output from an AC generator. If we colour the top of the coil as pink and the bottom as green in its current orientation, we can show the corresponding positions of the coil relative to the magnetic field during one complete rotation as we look at it along the axis of rotation. Now let's plot a graph that shows the variation of the magnetic flux linkage with the angle theta, which is the angle between the blue magnetic field vectors and the black arrow on the diagram. We know that magnetic flux linkage varies with cosine theta from the defining equation, so the graph will resemble a cosine wave as follows. Whenever the plane of the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field, so at theta equals 0 degrees and 180 degrees, the flux linkage will assume its maximum positive and negative values. If we substitute these angles into the flux linkage equation, and remembering that the cosines of these angles are either positive or negative 1, we find that these maximum values correspond to positive and negative NBA, where we can recall that N represents the number of turns of the coil, B is the magnetic flux density, and A is the area of the coil. Conversely, when the plane of the coil is parallel to the magnetic field, at theta equals 90 degrees and 270 degrees, the cosine value, and consequently the flux linkage, will be zero. In particular, if the rotation speed of the coil is constant, this graph will also show how the flux linkage varies with time. More specifically, if we denote the angular speed of the coil as omega, then this is equal to the rate of change of the angle theta with time. At the time t equals 0, we have theta equals 0. So if the angular speed of the coil is constant, the angle theta as a function of time will be given by theta equals omega t. Making this substitution in the flux linkage equation, we see that the flux linkage does indeed vary with time as a cosine wave. We can now consider a graph that shows the variation of the induced EMF with time. We know from Faraday's law of induction that the induced EMF is equal to the negative rate of change of magnetic flux linkage with time. So the induced EMF at each instant of time can be found from the negative of the gradient of the flux linkage time graph. Let's now consider a few important positions. When the plane of the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field, the gradient of the flux linkage time graph is zero, so the EMF induced at these times will be zero. Now let's consider the time when theta equals 90 degrees. The flux is decreasing most rapidly here, and the gradient will be most negative at this time. Therefore, this results in the largest positive induced EMF from Faraday's law. Conversely, when theta equals 270 degrees, the flux is increasing most rapidly, and the gradient will assume its maximum positive value, so the EMF induced at this time will be the most negative. When we repeat this analysis at each time, we find that the induced EMF varies sinusoidally with time, as shown by the red line on the graph. This EMF is known as an alternating voltage, because it repeatedly changes direction. 
Notice how there is a 90 degree phase lag between the flux and the induced EMF. Moreover, since we have a closed circuit, the induced current that results from this EMF will also vary sinusoidally in magnitude and direction, and this is known as an alternating current, hence the name of an alternating current generator. Students familiar with calculus will recognize that if we calculate the negative rate of change of flux linkage with time explicitly using differentiation, we find that the induced EMF does indeed vary as a sine wave with time, and the maximum positive and negative values of EMF are given by positive and negative omega NBA. Use of calculus is not expected in this course, however. We know that the magnitude of the induced EMF is dependent on the rate of change of flux linkage with time. So we can increase the magnitude of the EMF induced from an AC generator by increasing the number of turns on the rotating coil N, the magnetic flux density B, and the area of the coil A, as these will all increase the flux linkage. Another option to increase the output from an AC generator is to increase the speed of rotation of the coil. So suppose that we double the rotation speed of the coil while keeping everything else the same, and let's consider the same time period. Since the rotation speed is doubled, the coil will take half the time to complete one rotation. Moreover, the coil will have completed two rotations in this same time period, as we look at it along the axis of rotation, and therefore the flux linkage time graph will look like this. Again, we can sketch the variation of the induced EMF with time by considering the negative of the gradient of the flux linkage time graph. There are more times now where the plane of the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field, and where the gradient of the flux linkage time graph is zero, and these still correspond to a zero induced EMF. However, notice how as the coil rotates so that it is parallel to the magnetic field, the change in flux linkage occurs in a shorter time period. So the gradient of the flux linkage time graph at these times is much steeper compared to before, and results in a greater magnitude EMF being induced in the coil from Faraday's law. The full variation of the induced EMF with time when the rotation speed is doubled is then shown by the yellow line, and this can be compared with the induced EMF graph from before. Notice how both the frequency of the EMF and the magnitude of the peak EMF have doubled with rotation speed. Moreover, if we use the expression obtained earlier for the induced EMF, this further highlights how the rotation speed directly affects both the amplitude of the induced EMF and its frequency. We will now provide a final summary of the key understandings from this video. We saw that an alternating current generator consists of a coil of wire, usually with a large number of turns, that is made to rotate in a magnetic field. Such a motion induces an EMF in the coil from Faraday's law of induction. We found that this EMF varies sinusoidally with time, and this results in an alternating current that also varies sinusoidally with time. We concluded by showing that increasing the rotation speed of the coil will increase both the frequency of the induced EMF and the magnitude of the induced EMF. This now concludes this video on AC generators. Thank you for watching.